Well, here we are about to begin the study of the book of Malachi, the last minor prophet in our study, Gleanings from the Minor Prophets. He, the book of Malachi is our last book in this set of studies. We've been at it for some time, and I appreciate everyone who's stuck with it through thick and thin. Well, I, I missed y'all the um, past couple of weeks. Um, I missed studying the Word with you, but I appreciate the time away, not from the Word, not from you, but time away from the process, you know, and, and in order to give myself fully uh, to my parents for those couple of weeks. So thank you for uh, coming back and, and finishing up the Gleanings from the Minor Prophets study with me. I really do appreciate it, and I hope that you've learned a lot. I know I have. Well, as we begin, I want to remind you <clears throat> about the difference, a difference, between a major prophetic book and a minor prophetic book. Uh, major minor classification. Um, it has nothing to do with the quality of the information included in the prophecy. It has to do with the amount. So again, major minor classification has nothing to do with content. What classifies a prophetic book as a major minor uh, simply the amount of information included. So as we begin studying Malachi, through its classification as minor, we don't think less of the information in fact, the information included in the book of Malachi is very valuable for the church today in 2023. It's very valuable for you. It's very valuable for, for me, and it's highly applicable to the church today and to our lives. Uh, personally, just a little personal note, I feel that of all the minor prophetic books in the Bible, Malachi is the most applicable to the church today and to our lives today. Um, as we study Malachi, uh, you and I are going to be challenged. You and I are going to possibly even be convicted. Um, that's my prayer. So what I want to do today, very simply, very short, I want to share with you an, an introduction uh, to the book, the minor prophetic book of Malachi. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for allowing us to return together to study your word. Lord, as we reflect, read, research the book of Malachi, I pray, Lord, that you challenge us. I pray, Lord, that you possibly convict us and cause a change to occur in our lives, if there is one. That needs to be made, Father. We, we thank you for the way that you work through your word. You work it out into our lives. It is planted. It, it, it sprouts. It blooms into the beauty of living like Christ lived. May we be more like him every day. Thank you for speaking to our hearts in advance. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Look with me at Malachi 1 just one verse, Malachi 1.1. I'm reading from the 2011 NIV. A prophecy. The word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. A prophecy. The word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. Immediately from verse 1 we understand that the book of Malachi is a prophecy. It is a foretelling of things to come. Some prophecies in the Old Testament have been fulfilled, most of them fulfilled in Christ's coming, his birth, Christ's ministry, his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. So Malachi is a minor prophet, not minor because of the information, minor because of the length. It's a prophecy that contains the word or the words of whom? Malachi? No. 
the word of the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, and that is in his fullness, in his triunity as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God. Prophecy, word, words from God. In this case, the prophet, Malachi, was sharing the word, the words of the Lord. Malachi in Hebrew means messenger. So, the messenger of the Lord, Malachi, his name in Hebrew means messenger, is giving the words of the Lord. Malachi, messenger of God. Well, to whom was the Lord through Malachi sharing his word with? Look at verse 1 again. Malachi was sharing the word, the words of the Lord, in prophetic form to the nation of Israel. That means that contextually, within the context, the, con the, confines, the confines of the Old Testament, Malachi, the prophecy was for Israel, not us. But because the principles taught in the prophecy can be applied and they're applicable to our lives today, we learn, we become a part of the book of Malachi. We take out those applications, those principles of application, and we apply them to our lives. And then in turn, we apply them to church life, to the church, one church under God. Many members, one head, Jesus Christ. Well, as I said, I feel that out of all of the minor prophetic writings, Malachi is the most applicable to the church, most applicable to our lives for today. Within the four chapters of Malachi, very very short chapters, 12, maybe 20, 21 verses in each, you know, in the chapters. But within the four chapters of Malachi, the three main topics that we're going to look at, the three main topics that we're going to be confronted with are love, the love of God, covenants, and renewal. Love, love of God, his love for his people, covenants, promises, and renewal. Let me give you a little bit of a warning here, if I may please. As you privately study, as you privately research uh, the book of Malachi, you will be overwhelmed, you will find yourself overwhelmed if you try to make the book of Malachi fit within the parameters of the other minor prophetic books that we study together. Um, Malachi will not fit well within the parameters of the other minor prophets that we've studied. This is because the majority of Malachi, uh, it is so relatable to the New Testament. It is so connected to New Testament teaching. Malachi, to me, reads a lot like the New Testament. And I believe as you read it and reread it and reread it, that's my encouragement, um, that you will find that it reads like the New Testament. A lot of the teachings uh, in Malachi, again, are highly applicable to the church today. And, you know, in the days and weeks ahead, uh, ahead of us, um, as we study, as we reflect on the book of Malachi, my prayer is that God, through his Holy Spirit, will challenge us, that he will challenge our thinking, that he will challenge our living. My prayer also is that God through the Holy Spirit, if needed, uh, would bring conviction to us. And the outcome of conviction, of course, is change. Maybe you won't be convicted as we study Malachi. Maybe you will. But my prayer is if it's, if it's needed in your life and in my life, God will bring conviction to change our way of thinking, our way of li living. If you haven't already, let me encourage you strongly um, to read through the book of Malachi. It's just four chapters. Uh, begin taking your Bible study notes. Um, it depends on you how deep you want to go because I go deep 
in some cases, not every case, but I go pretty deep and we're going to look at it together. But I encourage you to always do your own personal study and don't truly completely rely on me uh, because I, I do get things wrong and you may have questions and you may see something that I don't see and it's good to learn together. It's good to grow together in that way. So if you haven't already, let me encourage you to read through four the four chapters of Malachi. Begin taking your de detailed notes as you study. At least, let me encourage you to answer the basic Bible study questions. Who, what, when, where, and why? Who, what, when, where, and why? Those are the basic Bible study questions that you can really get some good information by if you use them. I believe, you know, Malachi is going to be fun. I've studied it several times. It's a fun book fun in that we go, wow, we see that today. Uh, highly applicable. Uh, well, anyway, that's all that I wanted to share with you today. Taking it slow, getting back into the saddle and the routine of uh, making the videos and doing the Bible studies. Uh, much study goes into the, the study before the video, um, so uh, this is just a way to ease back into it, a simple introduction. Uh, let's pray together. And then just to share a, a, a scripture with you for encouragement. Father, again, we thank you for meeting us through your word. Thank you that we have been able to meet together, to, to chisel out the time to be together around your word. What a blessing it is. We just pray, Lord, you continue to open our eyes and our hearts to understand your word, to apply your word correctly, not incorrectly. Teach us change us, remold, remake us into the image of Jesus. Thank you for loving us through your word. Thank you for empowering us through your word. What a treasure it is. We love you. We exalt you. We magnify. We praise your holy name. It's in Christ's name we pray together. We agree together. Amen. Well, scripture of encouragement here. Until next week, 2 Timothy 2.15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word. Well, I love you. Y'all have a great week. If I don't see you before, I'll see you Sunday as we gather together again as a church to worship. Please continue to pray through the prayer guide, the bookmark, that's provided every Sunday in the ministry map and then our prayer guide that goes out every Wednesday to all of our membership. Um, pray over those. Very important. God is still answering prayers. He has answered many, and you can testify to that. Prayer is powerful. He is powerful, the one that we pray to. Pray for one another. Love you. Have a great week.